This week, our resolutions for the RV and outdoor industry in 2024. Plus, we have a new studio. We're not sitting in it yet, but we have a new studio. We're going to tell you about that more. This is RV Miles. This winter, L.L. Bean wants to help you feel great out there with gear tips and advice for heading outdoors and exploring all the possibilities of the season. When the temperatures are freezing, your extremities are going to feel the cold first, and nobody likes numb fingers or frosty toes. One small piece of gear that makes a big difference is glove liners. Put these on and you won't just get a little extra warmth. You can also take your hands out of your mittens without exposing them to the elements. For more tips, easy how-tos, and inspiring stories, visit llbean.com slash guide. Welcome to episode number 302 of RV Miles. I'm Jason. And I'm Abby. And we are two RVers who, along with our three boys, Jack, Ethan, and Henry, have been crisscrossing North America on one epic road trip since 2016. Here at RV Miles, we talk all things RV and outdoors, from industry news to travel destinations, our national parks, and a whole lot more. This is our final episode of 2023. It's been a wonderful year all around for us. Lots of great things have happened. Um, of course, we had our big adventure, our biggest RV adventure so far, heading from all the way down Southern Baja, all the way up to Alaska. Um, and we've capped it off with with such a great thing, uh, we think, for us and for uh, the RV Miles brand and, and all of our other ancillary things like the America's National Parks podcast going forward. We uh, we've been talking about this for for weeks now, but we have finally uh, signed the dotted line. We have closed <laughs> on our studio in downtown Rock Island, Illinois. Uh, so it's right on the Mississippi River. It's um, it's a small space. It's like six hundred and fifty square feet. It's right in a quaint historic downtown, uh, right near the historic Centennial Bridge. It's just a really great location for us. A great size for us uh something manageable that we can <laughs> we can deal with and we're gonna we're gonna get it all set up to be able to uh, really record all of our content from there or at least a lot of it we'll still be traveling a ton and and getting a lot from the road and we'll be going to rv dealerships and stuff but we're looking forward to having a set where where we sit and have RV Miles podcast recorded from and the news videos and all of that sort of stuff. It'll be really hard to leave the kitchen. Yeah. It'll be hard to leave the kitchen with this weird wall paneling situation over here that I get asked about on a very <laughs> regular basis by those of you that watch or those of you that come over for the lives. It's, it's very strange. I don't know what's happening here. This well, is like, the upper part is the furnace. I don't know what the lower panel is because it's like... It's a door to Narnia off. is what I just tell people every time. So I mean, if you're, it's, it's access. I don't know. It's but, access to what, though? Well, to like... The I, furnace? No, because the... Right. That's all the because the furnace access panel is above. <laughs> I, Nobody it's, knows. It's screwed off and painted over and everything. Who knows? Nobody knows where yeah. it goes. So if you're listening to this off of my right shoulder, there is access to our furnace above. So there's like a, a grate, but then below it is this panel, this door looking thing that we have no idea what it goes to, and we've done ourselves probably a disservice because we've backed this giant hutch right up to it. So should anyone ever need to get into this furnace, yeah. we in big trouble. I mean, I, you know, <laughs> oh we'll need to change the furnace filter at some point. So <laughs> probably now, probably now, <laughs> but that has nothing to do with the studio. Things that we're super excited about with the studio. First off, should we announce the name? Are we set yeah, on I, the name? I think I we am. are. So this came okay. from from an RV Miles listener, and I'm not sure who it was. Yeah, speak up, because we tried to search for it because we wanted to give this individual credit, and we couldn't find it. It was a mile marker member. I think so, and, and it was just a really good name, and it stuck yeah. with me for for months now. And we we tried searching in the group for it, and we could not find you. So you, we want to give you the credit for yeah. this. So we want to call this the Mile Zero Studios. Yeah. And we, ever since someone suggested that name to us, we have just been so 
just in love with yeah, it. Yeah, because everything perfect. begins there. So yes. it, you know, that's it's the uh, it's the home base, and, and uh, everything can be measured in distance from there. Yes, exactly. It is it is a great name, and a few of the things you know. I think we've talked about this story. So if this is repetitive, I'm sorry, but you know, when we looked at this space, I went and I said. We'll go look at it, yeah. but this is such an awful time for us to be yeah. buying. What are we doing? It's like right at the end of the year, we're just moving into an apartment. We're trying to get ourselves settled. We're trying to figure out what does the future of RV Miles look like? Why on earth would we, in typical Jason and Abby fashion, add on buying something? That that seems really wild. And we went and we immediately this as soon as i walked into the space i went oh, <laughs> we're going to buy this i just know we're going to buy this because it is in this quaint downtown area lots of old historic buildings which i love it's right on the riverfront it's got a beautiful park across the street where every year there's a bunch of music festivals that happen the beautiful centennial bridge is right there that goes and crosses you over into iowa and it feels like so it's a storefront with condos above it feels like this beautiful marriage of everything that we are. This access to uh, the riverfront and and nature and a park outside space on top of the beautiful historic buildings. And then you have this element of the minute I saw it, it felt like Chicago. It yeah. felt like the storefronts that you see when you're walking through the neighborhoods of Chicago. And there's all these uh, small local businesses in and around the area as well. And I thought this, this is what I want to be a part of well, a community. And, and the fact that it isn't a condo building means we don't have to deal with snow and, oh, all, for sure. and all the sort of stuff that we would maybe have to deal with when that we are huge. gone for several months at a time. So yeah. Parking the, spot yeah. included access to the upstairs rooftop patios, which is gorgeous overlooking the river. Well, um, and then again, like you said, general biz, like building maintenance, we won't have to worry about that. So when we're gone for long periods of time, like, you know, we've already got, we know in the summer, we're going to be gone for about five to six weeks. We don't have to worry about the studio. And that that's huge. Plus, you know, several people, when we've, since we've announced this on social media, have asked why, why we moved back to Illinois. Uh, <laughs> some of you have been some, really nice some, asking it. Some, some of you have been really not. mean. <laughs> uh, but, <laughs> don't but, hate so uh, much on the, Illinois. The biggest part of the reason is two things is family being here and uh, and healthcare and staying on our insurance plan, which we weren't actually able to do in our changing insurances. And we that's can't a talk about that. Thing. I'm going to start crying if but we talk about that. But the other thing is the cost of real estate. Uh, this this was definitely way more affordable than it would have been uh, in lots of other places in the country. I mean, I just shared a house with you last night. This is way uh, n not in not, the future. We're not buying, we're not a, buying house a house right now. But just, just, <laughs> not as, happening. just as an example, I mean, this place was uh, maybe a 30-year-old house on four and a half acres, five bedrooms, three-car garage. Three bath. Uh, it's listed for $350,000. Yeah. And I mean... That, you can't get that. that is, and like, that's really hard to find you know, anywhere else. Right now, we're just looking. We're only interested in living in places where we can be near family because, you know, we have, as we talked about last week, we've got the Seattle RV show, the Puyallup RV show, the Kansas City RV show lined up. And we don't want to take the kids to those things, then they don't want to go to those things. They have activities now and things that they're interested in. And so now because we're here with family or a driving, like as soon as we're done recording this podcast, we are loading up into the four wheel drive sleigh and we are headed to Kansas city to celebrate Christmas. And I am, you know, I want to still be able to do those things. And I want to still be able for us to travel either for RV miles, RV travel or travel as family. But I want the kids to have the option to be able to be involved in theater or film or whatever that is and not always have to go with us while we're at RV shows talking and walking around. Yeah. Like, I mean, they really, if 
I think they've heard enough seminars on how to RV in national parks <laughs> for like their they've lifetime. Done, they've walked through enough RVs too. <laughs> yeah. I, Although I never tire of walking through an RV, and I don't. I, I yeah. know some of our kids don't. Oh, either. I tire. I tire through. I, I mean, I love oh, doing it's it. It's one of my faves. But, but after like the twentieth one on a day. Mm, <laughs> I'm I, like these. What was that one? That kind of looked like this one. No, I could same. do it all day long. Uh, I love it. Point of clarification: the four wheel drive sleigh is the Ford. <laughs> we are taking the Tesla, which is the all wheel yes, drive sleigh. <laughs> but I was referencing a movie. I know. So, and you know, bonus points to anyone listening or watching that knows what movie I was referencing. So th- this will be our first real full family road trip in the tesla Mm -hmm. um we've gone to chicago several times in it but kansas city is a little bit further and we have everybody and we're packing all of our luggage Mm -hmm. and uh, we're gonna have more stuff when we come back of course because it's christmas so this will be interesting to see i had to edit myself and i'm only bringing four pairs of shoes and not the six that i really wanted for the seven day trip (laughs) That sounds so ridiculous saying it out loud, but I, I will be bringing two pairs of shoes. The one, one of them the will kids, be on my feet. The kids are only bringing one. Are pair. you counting the shoes that are on your feet or no? Oh, one, two, three. No, I'm sorry. I'm bringing five pairs of shoes. I'm only bringing five pairs of shoes. Yeah. Mm. I, I added it. I, I took two pairs out. Mm-hmm. So I'm only bringing Five. That's a lot of shoes. It is a lot of shoes, but we have a lot of different events going on that we, require we're different We're there shoes. for eight days. Right. But we are <laughs> we are going from events that are going to be at a bar, yeah. seeing a band, all the way up to going to the ballet. Right. So, you, so you've named to two have, things that have, have shoes. two pairs of shoes there. Right. I have to have my blendstones for the bar, but I have to have my heels right. for... And then in between... A pair of tennis shoes. The we, three. Well, we're done. I need we're my done. tennis shoes three, for we're done. making sure I get my steps in and going yeah. on exercise, yeah. my walk every day. And then that's it. And right. then I need my, I don't know which heels I want to wear yet, so I well, need to bring okay. both. Well, okay. They're bringing both because you don't know which one you're going to want to wear. I, I don't know what outfit I'm wearing to the ballet yet. Oh. So I brought two and they require two different pairs of shoes. Listen, I made it work. I'm still in a little weekender bag you are not and a you side are bag. not <laughs> and two side bags <laughs> okay. okay like it's fine <sighs> everything's fine around here we're but this has nothing to do with the studio yeah. except for the fact that one of the things we're hoping to build into the studio is also some sort of like dressing uh makeup kind of area as well that we don't have to some yeah. of the things that we wear at rv miles we just keep specifically keep for them. rv yeah. miles and we'd like to be able to keep it in the studio it'd and be nice to also have all of our equipment somewhere that in our house so the original idea was um having it under our bed we had the idea originally when we got this apartment that we were going to put all three kids <gasps> oh my god do you remember in one that? bedroom we were so cute and naive yeah and oh which, my which, god look I at mean, look at Look, little full-time RVers. They've thinking. grown up in RVs, <laughs> and you know that would be theoretically possible, oh uh, but a bad idea. And our sixteen-year-old, he needed his own room. We are. We were behaving as though we were the same people who had been living in an apartment seven years ago yeah. where our babies were sharing a room at that time, and our baby baby was actually just sleeping in our bed, and so. We literally, it's like time froze so, and we left that apartment and then we were gone for seven years. But when it came time to living in an apartment again, we was like, we forgot that there had been seven years between these children. <laughs> so the idea was that the third bedroom would be our studio space and it's not really big enough for that anyway. So oh, could you imagine um, trying to record in here? <laughs> this just, it's not possible. Yeah. We had come up with all of this while we were on the road. Yeah. Like we hadn't yeah. walked through here. We hadn't really gotten into yeah. the space. And so it became, I mean, as soon as we got here, it became very clear. This, that was not happening. Yeah. The studio was not going to happen here. Yeah. The and, rooms were a bit smaller than, and, cause we, we rented this apartment by an online walkthrough. Yeah. You know, so yeah. the rooms were a bit smaller than we had 
anticipated. Not bad. They're all fine, but they're, they're fine. Um, but the idea of putting three kids in that in the in the one room was just no, 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 no. Idea. It's and Jack. It's great to give him his own bedroom, but we found the space. It's perfect. We are so excited. There's a lot of work we have to do in it. Not anything structural. It's totally sound and fantastic. But it storefront. is. It is very very teal. It is very, very teal. teal and it's very wow. echoey. We gotta we gotta do some sound so much sound st- work, uh, so, some sound mitigation. I can't we- wait <laughs> to get my like fake grass wall. Yeah. Like I'm very excited for the fake grass wall that's gonna go over by the office area. We're gonna make signage. There's gonna be it's it's going to be, and we hope for all of you, and you're like, well, does this have anything to do with me? We hope to be able to encourage all of you. Our plan is to really start to encourage all of you to consider spending some time here in the Quad Cities, coming to some of the great campgrounds that are around here. There's plenty of wonderful places to eat and things to do, but also perhaps that we'll be able to open up the studio a couple of times a year. Maybe we'll do some live shows from there. You know, you can come in and, and, and be a part of the community. I mean, this is, you know, if you heard me last week uh, in my black tank, you know, we really are, are trying to go forward with our commitment to starting at our front door with how we behave and how we uh, uh, make positive change in the RV community so that anyone and everyone feels welcome. And one of the ways we hope to do that is by, you know, opening the door to what we do here. It's a great stop for anyone traveling across I-80. It's, uh, it's. I mean, we're you know, very close to I-80. So if you're traveling cross country that way, it's a it's a great stop over a place in general. Um, yeah. About, Pick us over the I-80 truck it's stop. It's about we're, three hours yeah. either direction between Chicago and Des Moines, right in mm-hmm. the middle of, of that sort of six hour stretch of, of road. So we closed on... Uh, Friday, mm-hmm. and uh, and now and, we're leaving. And got the keys, and then we, I just enough time to like go in and measure everything, uh, and then we're leaving town. Yeah. And then we come back for uh, like a few days, and we leave town again. <laughs> so we're not going to have any time to do any work on this place until like late January. But uh, uh, and then we're here for a little bit, and, and then, then we leave town again. <laughs> but we're very excited, so we'll probably put some temporary measures up. We'll we'll paint and and maybe. Hang some hang some fabric or some it's, moving blankets to quiet the noise down a bit, and maybe do a little recording from there. But you'll probably see us here for a few more times, I guess. Yeah, we're really gonna have to dig deep back into those storefront theater skills yeah. of having to be creative mm-hmm. with very little in the beginning. So yeah. it's gonna be a lot of fun, and we can't wait to share it with all of you. So that's gonna be a big change for us coming in 2024. Uh, but on today's show, we wanted to talk about some. Ideas for the RV and outdoor uh, recreation industry in 2024. Some New Year's resolutions, if you will. We've done this in the past before, so I always like doing this um, as the the New Year turns over. So Mm -hmm. we're going to take a break, and when we come back, we'll have that. Be right back. This episode is sponsored by the Park Wolf app. Ever found yourself in the heart of a national park, surrounded by beauty, but unsure where to go or what to see? That's where Park Wolf comes in. Park Wolf is the ultimate app for exploring national parks. As you drive, the GPS shows you what's coming up on the road, and an audio guide will fill you in on what's there so you can decide if it's worth a stop for you or not. Gas running low, looking for a bite to eat or a bathroom break? Park Wolf's got you covered. It keeps track of the nearest gas station, restrooms, food, and pullover areas. And the best part, it works without an internet connection. And if you're a wildlife enthusiast, you'll love Park Wolf's wildlife maps, and sighting notifications. So before you set off on your next National Park adventure, download the Park Wolf app for your iPhone from the App Store. It's your ultimate guide to national parks. Chances are you've seen them on the road. That's because Blue Ox designs and manufactures the best towing products in the industry. Just look around. You'll find them on highways and campgrounds and anywhere you find people traveling in the great outdoors. Award-winning tow bars, base plates, and brakes. A full line of weight-distributing hitches. Adjustable ball mounts and a new line of fifth-wheel hitches. With Blue Ox, towing doesn't have to be a drag. To learn more about how Blue Ox can make your travel adventures even more stress-free, visit blueox.com. 
We're back, and thank, I just want to take a moment here to thank all of our advertisers who have been with us for a very long time. Um, not all of them have been a long time, but many of them have been around for a very long time for supporting us throughout the year. Um, it's been a great year for us, and we look forward to working with them in the future. And we thank you for supporting our advertisers by going to their websites, at least, or checking out their products. Um, we try to work with folks that we we truly believe in. And these episodes are supported by them. They're also supported by our friends, the Mile Marker members. If you're a Mile Marker member, thanks so much. Um, we really appreciate it. If you're not, consider joining we do additional after the show podcasts and monthly live streams and uh, you get a free subscription to RV today magazine, stuff like that. And uh, today's after the podcast show, we're going to do our own sort of personal uh, new year's resolutions and, and talk a bit about our, our travel in 2024. Uh, if you want to check that out. Yeah. Just head over to rvmiles.com slash mile markers and you can join for as little as $7 a month, or you can get two months free and just join for the entire year. And that is only $70. And so like Jason said, all of that money goes right back into RV miles. None of it goes into our pockets. We put it right back into the business so that we can be better creators and podcasters for all of you. So thank you so much for the support. Uh, let's talk about really we are we're using we are going to give our resolutions for the RV industry but let's be honest here i have one you have 45 probably that's about 10, that is about 10. <laughs> so I, I, I made a list and you one. you haven't seen most of these um no but uh, i really left this to you because yeah. i think that it's important to acknowledge when I'm out of my depths. And <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I don't think you are, and I think you'll you'll. I think when you hear this, you'll you'll um, you'll understand that you're you're not. I think there's I, a lot of uh, of a lot you have to offer to this, and I'm interested to hear your takes on some of these things. So, all right, well, let's um, get your first. These are not. First off, let's make it clear: these are not hot takes. These no. are not unpopular opinions. No. These are just from uh, our point of view. Things that perhaps going into 2024 would really uh, behoove the RV industry to maybe consider. Yeah. And, and, and more wider, the, the entire outdoor recreation industry. Yes. So the, the U S department of commerce announced uh, about a month ago that the outdoor recreation industry is now a $1.1 trillion industry, wow. $1.1 $1 in total economic output during 2022. You, I just, you did just say $1.1. $1 .1, I think. One, I'm sorry, $1.1 $1 trillion uh, in total We'd be economic out of a job output. If it was $1.1. $1 and that's more than oil, gas extraction, and mining combined. Wow. I mean, this is, a, it is a big industry now in the United States. So that's come over the course of the last few years where outdoor recreation has really blown up. It's not just RVing. You know, I, we, we sit in our little silo here and think about RVing a lot and how big RVing got during the pandemic. A lot of people in the industry kind of consider it now like it was a fast forward. Like a lot of people that may have considered buying an RV over like the next five to 10 years, they just sort of moved that purchase up because the pandemic made it a little bit easier. They also got some checks from the government that made it a little bit easier and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And that goes across the board for uh, boating, for power sports like ATVs and snowmobiles and, uh, and hiking and biking um, national parks, you name it. Outdoor recreation has grown dramatically over the last few years. And with that, there's going to be some growing pain. So let's start with the RV stuff here, though. Um, my first thing for RVing is fewer RV brands, fewer RV brands and fewer floor plans. Now, I think there might be a little bit of this happening in the in the near future in a, a, an unfortunate way, like we might see a couple brands closing, probably nobody big. Um, we might see some layoffs. Um, and we already have seen a bunch of layoffs because the RV industry hired a lot of people mm -hmm. in, in, in sort of the boom times. And that now production is really cut in half uh, of what it was at its height. 
but I, I don't think this needs to be layoffs. Um, I think, I think some of the manufacturers out there can sort of combine uh, their plants a bit and, and produce fewer brands and more of their quality brands. Um, mm -hmm. and, and that doesn't necessarily mean the most expensive, just this stuff that is performing well, really well and has the, the, you know, lowest number of, uh, uh, you know, warranty issues, all that sort of stuff. And there's some brands out there that, you know, are this whole game that the, the manufacturers play where they have duplicates so they can be sold at, at, different dealerships in the same town mm. where they've got like this, this, you know, I we're forest river brand ambassadors. I'm going to call them out on this. They've got a lot, a lot of this happening with Rockwood and Flagstaff and, um, and Ibex and no boundaries. They're, they're virtually the same brands. Um, and, and it's a, it's a bit of a game and I, I, I think it's kind of unfortunate and it doesn't really, it doesn't really work to sell the the quality of those brands. I think those are actually very high quality brands. And um, I think it would be better if we had a few less brands and a few fewer floor plants. Now, the reason there are so many billions of floor plans is so many buyers are just obsessed with, with picking just the right floor plan and really don't care about all the other things sometimes. And I think that's where buyers have actually um, made the industry worse in, in some ways. There are too many floor plans and that, that introduces a level of, uh, of change in manufacturing where they've got to change out the, the lines when they run different floor plans that, that reduces quality. And yet I have to push back just on that really quick about the, mm -hmm. uh, buyer because we are a buyer that mm -hmm. is currently, uh, a little frustrated with floor plans because we don't feel that a lot of them address families, larger families with older kids. Yeah. And so there does seem to be, I completely agree with you that we need to have fewer floor plans out there, fewer yeah. types. It is incredibly overwhelming to a new buyer yeah. to go through and look at everything that is out there and, you know, do a few things and do them well, and that will serve you and your reputation yeah. for sure. I would like to see some variety of RV lifestyle out there. Like, let's create, don't tell me that this sleeps 10 and then expect me to put two people on a couch. You know, that is yeah. Or if you do, let's make that a nice sleeping position couch and Absolutely. not something with a bar in your back. But as we have over the seven years, as we have gone from being a, a family that RVs that has children that have gone through massive growth spurts, my 13 year old walked up to me today and he is, he is now eye to eye with me. And like two weeks ago, that was not the case. They're, they're growing so fast. It would be really wonderful to see a space that is a little bit more older kid friendly on top of the flex space that we've always advocated for wanting some sort of flex space beyond just the traditional toy hauler for really addressing. And I think we got so close to it really addressing like, uh, no nomads and, and working from the road. And I felt like we started to really see a lot of that happening. And then that has just kind of gone. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't well, uh, move uh, that forward more. We're like, here's a desk in, the kitchen, you're welcome. Yeah, the the whole all the supply chain issues really fouled up a lot of that innovation that was happening. Yeah, really early on in the pandemic, uh, with a lot of the sort of work from home stuff that was moving into RVing, and that goes right along with my my second yeah, resolution here is is non gimmicky innovation. Uh, we are back to the point where the manufacturers are starting to innovate again in order to compete with each other for a while there, they weren't really having to do a lot of innovation. And I think now is the time that they can really start to do a bit of that, but I don't want gimmicks. I don't want stuff that, that is like so super specific, uh, for RVing and can break easily and all that. I want, I want better. I want, I want a true change in the way, RV furnaces and air conditioners are manufactured. You know, I want like stuff like that, you know. I saw so non-gimmicky innovation. 
I saw a reel the other day by Saber and they were walking through the kitchen. It's their new floor plan. And she walks up and she pulls a drawer out and it is a, it is a cabinet drawer for a garbage can. And I went, there it is. There it is. Some of it's not innovation. It's just doing stuff like, that's that's. But I was like, know, look like, how think it, about how people use these things. Like, we need garbage cans. There's never a place for a garbage can. But that was so innovative to me because yeah. I was like, finally, you they know, also, I, you're I, seeing more practical. I think that's the thing. You're seeing more practical innovation. The new sabers, all, they've also put stuff like a uh, silverware divider in one drawer, yes. like the stuff like you you don't think about. Until you go to use it, and you're like, oh, yes. I'm just going to have all my silverware flying around in this drawer, or one of those trays that doesn't quite fit. Doesn't quite fit. Yeah. Practical innovation. Let's move away from the gimmicky innovation, yeah. smoke and mirrors, and let's move to practical innovation. Because that's, honestly, that is what we as as buyers and in the RV community as content creators that's what we talk about. Yeah. I'm talking about the fact that there's a dedicated place in a reel that I saw for an RV that has a, tra- a space for a trash can. Yeah. You know, and that can be across multiple different brands, I'm sure. But like the fact that that's what I took away from that, right. Right. I think that that speaks volumes to how people talk about brands going forward. We want practical innovation. A good place for laundry. There's never a good place oh, for laundry. I will I will lose it when I start seeing RVs that have like actual space built in for you to slide a laundry basket in the bathroom or slide it into the yeah. closet. Not me having to like shove it in a corner. I'm sure some of that exists out there. <laughs> well, I'm and sure it does. Share, but, but that's the yeah. thing. It exists out there. But, it's rare. But as someone yeah. but as someone who's been in this yeah, world for seven yeah, years. Yeah, I can't na- I can't name a brand off the top of my head because that's not how common it is. That's why the first RV is out, it's so hard for it to be your forever RV because yeah, it, there are so many are are sold. Uh, I would call them theater sets. I mean, they're sold to you uh, just on the way they look and mm-hmm. and not how they function for you. And they're just things that you forget about until you get into it and start using it and realize, yeah. oh, I didn't think about i need to put my laundry somewhere i guess it's going in the bathroom well that's my point i guess it's going in the shower it's going in the shower (laughs) we can all say i can't name off the top of my head a brand that has a designated space for a laundry basket but i can name a dozen of more people whose solution to that is to put their laundry in the shower yeah because that's the more common thing that happens. Yeah. So, you know, practical innovation in 2024, yeah. for sure. Next up is a, is a no-brainer improvement in this stat they call in the RV industry, repair event cycle time. What's its nickname? This is a R-E-C-T, you or, or you could say wrecked. wrecked. I, think, I think somebody needs to come, with, come up with a, I'm gonna a, leave. a U and an M <laughs> for the acronym. <laughs> I'm going to leave it right there. We're just going to leave that laying there. The, uh, repair forward. event cycle time is the number of days from the day you drop an RV off at a service center for it to get repaired. November's average in the industry was 37 days wow. and 56 days if you were getting warranty work done. Wow. So that number has to come down. And uh, that's going to take more technicians, more service centers. The number of RV technicians has hardly grown in the last 20 years. Wow. And it is a lucrative. And now there are a lot of mobile technicians now. Um, and uh, and that can be a very lucrative industry. Um, but RV technicians are, are getting paid a little bit more now than they used to be getting paid. So it's a good career for a lot of people. Um, but I, that number definitely needs to come down um, and that it's going to involve lots of things, parts, manufacturers with their warranty approval, um, dealerships and service bays and all that sort of stuff. That warranty work number is really frustrating yeah. because that is nothing than just hold up, hold up, hold up in an attempt to not pay. Basically, it's because- saying it's going to take 20 more days to get warranty work done than it does to take non-warranty work. That means that's 20 days that the manufacturer is, you know, what needs to happen is more dealerships need to be 
pre-certified to make their own decisions Mm -hmm. on some of this warranty work. Dealers need to be able to self-certify that this is a warranty problem and it's, you know, especially if it's a common thing, it's happened to several units in this line or whatever. Yeah. And, and instead of waiting to get approval from the manufacturer. That's just 20 days of back and forth phone calls yeah. arguing to get the work yeah, done. I mean, That's all that is. 56 days is, it's it's almost two months. Well, yeah. And when it, you consider that a lot of times people figure out they need warranty work when yeah. they're using it. Yeah. And they're using it for such a small window of time. Their camping season could, you know, maybe isn't as long as a full timer's for sure. And well, yeah. gosh, think about like trying to figure that out as a full timer. Well, and how many people just forego even getting warranty work done yeah, well, because of how much of a pain it is? So this doesn't even include all of that. Or they they pay a mobile technician themselves to have it done because mm-hmm. they're not going to take it in somewhere when they're halfway across the country uh, on a camping trip. They're going to have somebody come out and fix it or they fix it themselves. We never had yeah. warranty work done. We always just fixed it ourselves. Yeah. Because no, yeah. it just, we knew. And even without having that number in front of me, we always knew yeah. it just, it wasn't going to be like a two day turnaround. An improvement in financing deals. <sighs> I, the, look, if you have a, financing deal like what I'm about to describe, know that you are within the average and I'm not judging you in any way. We certainly have had bad financing in the past, but the current average loan terms are $54,000 financed is the, is the average amount of money that's currently financed on a new RV at an average interest rate of 10.14% over an average number of months, 181 months. I don't know how many years that is, but it's like, what's that, like 15 years or so? so there are a lot of 20-year loans out there. There are a lot of people with interest rates higher than that. But that average uh, at $54,000, 10.14 interest rate, over 181 months, that would be a $106,000 loan, folks. That's you're paying double <laughs> wow. in interest over the life of that RV. So uh, hopefully that's going to start to improve if interest rates begin to go down as it seems they will be and actually yeah. already have been a little bit in advance of Fed planning to have three rate cuts next year and uh, and the fact that uh, RVs haven't been selling as well. You're getting more favorable terms in some cases out there, but uh, try to get a better loan than that. That's robbery. That's just, there's no other way to describe it. That's just robbery. Um, All right. The next one you have on here is more national parks to help spread out the crowds, which you just actually, the uh, news from the parks episode came out over the weekend and we added three more Lowercase yeah. n, lowercase p. We added three more sites to the overall yeah. national park and service. It's a little, de- it's a little deceiving because we didn't actually. I mean, they were they already were managed by the national yeah. park service. They're now just three national trails have been added as official units of the national park service. But I am talking about those big capital and capital P national parks. The sixty three, um, uh, and not everybody will agree with me on this, but I think we need to change more of them to have that status. Uh, because hmm. that and that for the people that are near that particular one, they're not wouldn't be so happy about that because it does draw tourism in. But I think the more of them that we have that status, the more it will uh, spread people around a little bit. Uh, I, frankly, I'd be fine with changing like half of the ones that exist to be just called, you know, Devil's Tower National Park instead of Devil's Tower National Monument. Let's get rid of this national park. Um, status that makes these things places where everybody has to you know go collect all sixty three stamps and they they uh, just have to go to them um, while avoiding some other really special places. There, it, it, it's a problem. It's a problem where we just don't have enough to go around. It's like Taylor Swift. There's only <laughs> one Taylor Swift, and everybody wants to go see her concert. So they're very, very <laughs> expensive to get into. A Taylor Swift concert. If yeah. we had more Taylor Swifts, we would be able to have more affordable Taylor Swift tickets. But then it wouldn't be as special. Right, which is fine. 
because it would but still whole, be, but it would still be as good because it'd be the same thing. I, you, you make a lot of really good points. I think, um, I don't, I don't know that I necessarily agree that we need more capital N, capital P's. I think we just need more to continue to raise more awareness of all of the other units that are out there and actually make going to all 428, 29, I think we're somewhere up and around there now. I, I put the, I, I, I it, the number was in the last episode. Yeah, I, I think it it's somewhere up yeah. in there. I think it's four, anywhere between 426 yeah. and 429. I'm not sure. Uh, but I think we need to make going to all of those the reason why you get to be in an article in USA Today or the you know New York yeah. Times or something like that. And there is, I think, this level of uh, celebrity that you're hoping for if you accomplish all 63 capital N capital P's. And if you can do it all in like, I look, I did it all in like three months or <laughs> something like that. Like, I think that we've, we've put a lot of emphasis, uh, uh, the media has put a lot of yeah. emphasis on these parks and, um, the accomplishment it is an accomplishment to i think it's an accomplishment just to go out and spend time in nature it, I, you it's know not, it's I, not just about feeling, people that want to collect them all but a lot of people are like i want to go on a national park road trip this year yes. and when they think about that they look at those 63 and they 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 pick some out well, some, of, some of them are spectacular the grand yeah. canyon is spectacular uh, yeah. jason i mean sure. it is i i i, I totally you know agree. yellowstone is i totally agree you know uh, I just think we, regardless if it was called Yellowstone Monument or Yellowstone National Park, it is spectacular. It I, is hard to not want to go to those it, it, truly majestic places. It wouldn't. I'm not saying I'm not saying it would be a magical thing that would solve the problem. I just think it would help a little bit. Yeah, it, it could help ease. But do you think that a lot of people are picking Gateway Arch National Park over going to the Grand Canyon? Because not, it's a, it's called a national park. Not over going to the Grand Canyon, no. You know, uh, are yeah, they? No, but but I think, are they forgoing? But, but do I think if we had a few more Midwestern national parks that people might consider visiting some more? Like, well, watch out! They're trying to build a bison bridge <sighs> here. Okay, so calm down. You're going to get your wish. The bison oh, bridge. See, now we have to explain what this is. Save it. You know what? I'll put it in my black tank. We'll talk about okay, it then. We'll come okay. back to it at the end of the okay. show. If you want to know what the bison bridge is. Hold on, buckle up. We'll talk about it at the end of the show. <laughs> All right. So going along with this, my next resolution uh, was for there to be more affordable public campsites. Uh, obviously, there has been a lot of money going into commercial campsites over the last few years. That that construction is happening at a slower rate than the number of people that have bought RVs and the number of people that are camping out there. But that has been happening. Mm -hmm. But what hasn't been happening anywhere near any level, if hardly at all, is increases in the number of campsites at federal, state, and local parks. And whether that's new campgrounds or adding campsites to existing campgrounds, I think we really need some more affordable no frills, uh, beautiful nature uh, type campsites out there, uh, and, and not rely entirely on the the private industry to do all of this. I agree with you a hundred percent on that one. But along the private campground front, the commercial campground front, I would really like to see some more unique commercial campgrounds instead of just here's another RV resort with you know the same amenities that they all have let's make them a little different. You know, let's put some new ideas into some, like, you know, I was having a conversation about this with somebody earlier today in the RV miles, Facebook group about if I ever had a campground, I would love to have like a big, great lawn. That is a space where you could have farmers markets and, um, and concerts and, and stuff like that. Outdoor Shakespeare. Uh, places where I, I, there's that new RV resort in in the Smokies that has, really feels like an uh, like an old Appalachian sort of resort experience, 
but in a much more elevated way. Mm -hmm. Like they just don't need to all look the same. They don't need to all have the same type of site layouts. They can just have interesting, fun things that are different. They need don't need to go all go to the same vendors for the same picnic tables and the same grills. And then, you yeah. know, it, that, that sort of stuff, I would just love to see a little bit more variety in. Well, it is the spice of life. But also, <laughs> you have to have the variety in order to have the spice. Yeah, yeah. So I, I cannot speak on what the picnic table industry is like out there. I don't know how many how many like variations on the picnic table there are and that could be an issue yeah but there has you know for someone to come and be like i'm gonna make an innovative picnic does table. it need to be a rectangle for instance well, could we have circles maybe but somebody's got you know somebody's got to see a market for that so there's you know, a market the market is there uh well you gotta get it to the Gotta get it to the people. Spice so, up the life. So this next one is is really about the uh, the broader outdoor recreation industry as a whole. So this this applies to all uh, public parks and and public lands. I think is an improvement in some of the very basic amenities. And I'm not talking about like adding zip lines and stuff. I'm talking about let's have some nicer, cleaner bathrooms. Uh, Maybe some dump stations for RVs. Just yeah. some just some uh, real, real basic things. Some better parking in some places. Iowa. Real, oh. Consider it. Well, Open uh, them back up. That's what we've, and what we've been seeing you know is, you want to. is the opposite, where stuff like this is getting removed. Like I, the, What Abby's referring to is the Iowa uh, rest areas used to have free dump stations, and they have closed them, and other states have done the same. And not necessarily that they need to be free dump stations, but we need to have more uh, dump stations so people aren't dumping on public lands. We yeah. need to have better bathrooms so people aren't, um, you know, throwing toilet paper on the ground and stuff like that. And we need, we just, l l there's more people out there. So we, we have to do some things in order to accommodate those more people in order to continue protecting the land. Agreed. Uh, I'm going to move us along, or this is going to be a two hour show. Uh, you have on here next um, a real hybrid heavy duty truck. That's a big ask in 2024, Jason Epperson. <sighs> I'm not sure that, that you're going to get that because I, I, I know what's in your black tank. So, uh, Well, here's the thing. We're, we're, there's all this talk about electric trucks. Uh, the Cybertruck, of course, just came out and, and Ford and Rivian have their trucks. Ram is moving on. Uh, forward with their uh, electric truck ram is coming out with a a an electric truck that does have a, a i was gonna say ram fuel pills. uh they their their ram charger they call it is going to have a uh a, i believe it's a gas engine that will uh charge the batteries mm -hmm. and you know that to me is a hybrid that's great um let's do that but that's not going to be a heavy duty truck right and there are other hybrid half ton trucks out there and i feel like the heavy duty truck is a market that is screaming for a hybrid vehicle because you you have the ability to tow very heavily there's there's a bigger disparity between the the amount of work that engine does when it is towing and when it is not than many other vehicles, because there there's so much weight that you can tow with it. Yeah. And I think that just makes a hybrid so perfect for the, the heavy duty truck lineup because we all want better fuel mileage when we're driving a, around town and not towing. Um, but then we want the power and the range when we're able to tow. And I think some manufacturers are thinking, well, Everything's moving to electric, so we're just focusing on that. But the heavy-duty truck range, it, it's not going to be electric for quite some time to come. Uh, it, it, so I, I, I think this is just a real missed opportunity at the moment. That Ford hybrid, I, I have always wanted the Ford F-150 hybrid since mm -hmm. they came out with it because it 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 does exactly what I'm talking about, but also has the ability to do things like allow you to plug your RV into it and use it as a generator. And 
how great would that be with a heavy duty truck? But yeah. we can't have that heavy duty truck because they don't do it. So. We can't have nice things sometimes. Yeah. Maybe in 2025 we'll yeah. get one. So we'll my keep asking. my uh, my final bit here on this list it basically comes back to the beginning of where we've had this big glow up in in outdoor recreation. There are many many more people enjoying public lands. So we as a community of people need to drop a bit of selfishness and and figure out some ways to come together to re-engage in the responsibility of protecting and preserving our public lands. We've done mm-hmm. it in the past. We can do it more in the future. This is about being more responsible with how we treat public lands, whether we're hiking, whether we're boondocking, um, you know, whether we're cleaning out dishes and dumping gray water and all that sort of stuff, finding ways to understand that this land is your land. (laughs) This land is my land. Uh, This land is all we got. And this land is all we've got. Um, and we got to take care of it. Let's take care of it for generations to come. It's so fascinating because, you know, I, In 2016, 2017, 2018, I feel like this was a, there was a lot of momentum for this, that this was, and really this is why this idea that um, we were all very focused on protecting land and raising awareness for, and and as a community, as a, as a, a country, we were all very much behind this. And that is, I think, one of the reasons why America's National Parks podcast started. Well, because it, that's how we it, found a way to be a part of that conversation, by sharing these stories from our lands. 2016 was the 100th anniversary yes. of the National Park Service. And that sort of kicked off several years of, of interest in the national parks. And there was, a lot, of course, there was a lot of news stories around that and everything. And a lot of people wanting to go to national parks on the hundredth anniversary, and then following up with that. That I mean, the the, the two, 2016 was the busiest year for national parks yeah. up to that point. And then following that, when the pandemic hit, then now we've got like twice as many people since 2016 utilizing public land. Yes, but it seems like with the hundred in 2016 on, there was a real unity of protection yeah, yeah. around because we were celebrating a hundred years of being attempting to be good protective stewards of our land. And then it does feel like the pandemic hit and we all rediscovered the outdoors, but we didn't rediscover it in a way that was talking about protection that was talking yeah. about preservation, that wasn't celebrating them. In fact, it was more like, get off my lawn. This belongs to me. You won't stop me from doing what I want to do. And that narrative has continued. And what it has forced the National Park Service to do is put actions into place that are protecting the lands from us now, even more so. So, And then the cycle begins. You yell and you yell and you yell, and we hear this in the comments all the time. You yell, you yell, you yell about how this is your land and you should be able to do whatever you want to do and that the National Park Service is overreaching. And frankly, they're, you think they're overreaching. They're overreaching because we have forced them to overreach. They're just, I can, that's what, it's, because the job it's, of the National Park Service is not to make sure you get to go walk wherever you want to walk in Yellowstone, that you get to go out onto this very delicate and precious prairie. It's too many people going it's to, to protect to, going it to the from same us. places. And we, yeah, we, we had to protect bison because we almost didn't have bison. Yeah. Uh, the, the, you know, like trees have to be protected because we almost didn't have redwoods to protect anymore. Mm. Like we are our own worst enemy sometimes when it comes to how we behave outdoors we're going to see more boondocking areas uh closed down or or going to reservation only we're going to see more national park reservations um we're we're going to see more vehicle restrictions we're going to see lots of this stuff continue to go forward because there just isn't regardless of even the 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 impact on the the infrastructure and on nature 
there isn't the money or the people, the manpower yeah. to, to, well, yeah. I mean, to that deal with too. it. Like, so, we've talked about even from a law yeah. enforcement standpoint. The Bureau of Land Management, yeah. um, we, we had mentioned, there's one, one law enforcement ranger for every 2 million acres that the Bureau of Land Management holds. And yes, it sucks that you know, the idea that one is ruining it for the rest of us, but it's really not one right now. It's hundreds, it's thousands. And we have to address that. So this is a, the idea here is to like, okay, let's, let's come together as a community and, and find some common ground here and, and build up a culture of respect and love and care mm-hmm. for our public lands. Yeah. And, you know, I mentioned America's National Parks podcast and how that was really born out of the idea and the celebration of the 100 years. And and this was a way that we could bring, you know, what we, what we know how to do into that protective and uh, responsible space for the outdoors. As we look to 2024 for America's National Parks, we have begun to recognize that we need to shift that a little bit to 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 follow with what you're saying here to re-engage in the responsibility and protecting and preserving of our lands. And so there's going to be some new content that's going to come into there that we think will hopefully help uh, that narrative of getting enthusiastic about protecting yeah. land <laughs> and the stories uh, and why we want to protect them because the stories are so incredible. You do better when you know, you know, and so let's know more so that we can do better. If you haven't checked out the America's national parks podcast, you can find it on any podcast app. Let's take a break. And when we come back, we'll check the level of our tanks. Be right back. You know, when I was a kid, one of the best Christmases ever, I remember my dad bringing out a brand new bicycle into the living room when I was like seven years old. What's the adult version of that? What's the way that you can deliver that best gift ever affect this holiday season? Well, you can still do it with a bike. Electric e-bikes will impress even the hardest person to shop for on your list. There are lots of e-bikes to choose from out there, but there's only one electric XP, the best selling e-bike in America. It's the perfect gift for the explorer, the eco-warrior, or the parent on your list, or just as a treat for yourself. And starting at just $749, these e-bikes are friendly on your wallet. Plus, you can get hundreds of dollars in free accessories when you purchase this holiday season at electricebikes.com. That's L-E-C-T-R-I-C-E bikes.com. All right, welcome back. And it is time to check the level of our tanks. Jay, what's in your black tank this week? We talked a bit about uh, the Tesla Cybertruck, uh, uh, not on last episode, but don't the, you mean the Pontiac Aztec one, one before it? Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, uh, I you know, don't know what the Cybertruck uh, you speak of is. Again, we are we are Tesla owners. We love our Tesla Model Y. Getting ready to take it to Kansas City. We are not Elon Musk sycophants, um, mm. but uh, we do love our Tesla. Yes, but I will say uh, I'm not super thrilled about the Cybertruck, but really not thrilled about this thing that just came out. The, so we talked on that episode about how they were going to have a, a range extender of some sort they had announced. Um, and I had assumed that that range extender would be some sort of fossil fuel mm-hmm. as other electric vehicles have, have used like the Ram charger that we mentioned that is coming in the future. Uh, but that is not what the range extender is. The range extender that that uh, they're offering for the Cybertruck is an additional battery pack that gets mounted in the truck bed. Oh, st- which I think is first of what all the truck bed. The truck bed is so tiny, <laughs> um, and then you're mounting this back there, uh, and 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 then the real crux of this, though, to me, is that I. Th- I think, and I'm not the first one to say this, so it's, uh, but I, I do feel that the whole reasoning behind this is to keep the price of the Cybertruck under a number that still qualifies for that federal tax credit. 
Ah. And then you go buy this range extender after the fact. Oh. And uh, mm. I, so I think it's just a, uh, you know, they had originally announced this 500 mile range for the Tesla Cybertruck back four years ago when they announced this truck. And that didn't come to pass. But now with this range extender, it does. But if you had built a truck with 500 um, hours of, but if you'd built a truck with 500 miles of battery capacity, it wouldn't qualify for any of, any of these tax credits because it would be too expensive. That and the fact that I think they just didn't have the room for the batteries. If you actually look at the departure angle of the truck, and the departure angle is is the is the angle up from the wheels to the to the rear bumper. So when you're off roading or you're on like a you know a steep grade or something, it's on any truck in particular, but any vehicle. It, it's it's what uh, how how steep of, a, of an angle you can transition from without the rear of your truck hitting the ground mm-hmm. and if you look at the bumper it looks like it has a really nice departure angle on the back of of the cyber truck but when you look closer like the battery pack is like black and comes straight back uh. and goes up so that thing is gonna hit and hit and hit and hit and hit because they just didn't have the room to cram the the amount of battery power in the need there. So I will be staying with Fordo. Never, um, never, never been a fan mm. of the way Tesla. I will. Uh, I, the way Tesla announces things and um, pretends things are going to exist that do or aren't. Yeah, I'm not a fan of it, um, but maybe it will inspire others <laughs> to um, try to create something a little bit more practical. All right, what is in your fresh tank this week? Uh, my fresh tank is uh, the the Apple App Store. You know, every year they do their their sort of list of apps of the year, and then they mm-hmm. have one main app of the year. And this goes right up with the conversation about the the big boom in outdoor recreation is Apple's app of the year was all trails. Um, So congratulations to the folks at all trails. All trails is an app that we love to use. We use it a lot when we're hiking trails. I think it has just the right balance of free to use features. If you aren't a subscriber and then some better features, if you, pay to have a subscription, um, which I find really rare these days. Yes. Often it's like you got to pay to even try to use an app. <laughs> We're going to give you 48 hours yeah. to decide if this and app we, is going to change your life. And then you're going to pay us $212. And we will automatically charge you that, right? <laughs> yes, because uh, you will forget. And we know that. Yeah. Yeah. Tricking people is never a way to sell your product. That right? seven day free trial Every time someone offers me a seven-day free trial, I just go ahead and assume I'm paying for this because I'm not going to remember. I will not, and they know I'm not going to remember. See, I do. I do like, hey Siri, uh, set a set a reminder to cancel this. I'll tell Siri yeah. set a reminder, and then I'll and get the reminder and, and I'll swipe separate. it away because I'm in the middle of something else. Uh, but all trails, if you haven't checked it out, it is a really great app to get trail maps and to get get you know reviews from people about a trail, the current conditions, if, if somebody has been on it recently, uh, that sort of stuff. Of course, apps like this are only as good as the user base and how many people put in information and, and all, all trails has a really good user base yes. and it will track your route and you can look at that. You can download the trail route. So even though you don't have service out in the middle, middle of the trail, you can know where you are and know the direction you need to head to get back home. It's, it's a it's wonderful great. app. Love it. All right. Want to ask me what's in my black yeah, tanker? I was, I, was, <laughs> I was about to do that. I, I mean, I can. Yeah. I am an independent person. Yeah. I can talk about my no, own black tank. That is not the format. <laughs> Abby, what is in your black tank this week? It's time to talk bison bridge. So we mentioned it at the <laughs> in the last segment. I, well, we may have We've, mentioned this in the past. Have. I don't remember. We've but, talked about this before. But, but it, there's it was a different lot of, now. I have seen a model of it now. So I can. Yeah. I have, I have, I have, I They're trying to move forward. <laughs> So for all of you new to the RV Miles world, this is going to be a new story for you. For some of you, it's an old story with an update. There is this, cra- there is this craziness going on here. It, I, it harkens back to the... There is a song here in the Quad Cities that they seem to want to play on the NBC channel on Sunday nights. Oh, it's so good. It's like their theme song. Yeah. And it's just a, 
it's bad. Oh no, that's the one it's of the best so things bad. I love about it's being like, back is like local jingles. Oh, it's oh, the so it's the worst local jingle. They have this woman singing notes that no it's female great. should have to belt out. These are the kind of decisions being made here in the Quad Cities, and Bison Bridge is right up here with KWQC's Hello Quad Cities jingle. Um, <laughs> they're, they want to take one of the bridges that goes from Illinois to Iowa across the uh, Mississippi, I almost said the Missouri, across the Mississippi, and they want to landscape it and have it become a, uh, a living space, a grazing space. For bison, it, this is like it, this is a bridge. Uh, it's the two eighty. It's, it's the two eighty bridge, um, and this is just one of those just flat bridges. Like there's nothing special about it. It's you know it's a it's a high. It's an interstate, so it's four lanes divided. Yeah. So it's like two bridges essentially, and, they and it's just flat. So they their idea is to, yeah just turn this into a park for bison to graze and they on. Wanna, they want to actually have it designated. <laughs> They want it to be. And a, the they think it can be dis- a, a national park. This is a bridge. The, the, this is a bridge with so bison on it. I, I I was last time I flew out of the Quad City Airport. So in the airport lobby. Yes, there is an airport here. There in the airport lobby. <laughs> is there, it an it, international airport? It is an international airport. Wow. But do they fly to like <laughs> Canada? They probably fly yep. to Toronto and they um, get like international status. There is a model of what they want this to be. And it is in, in in it they describe like how people thought the Gateway Arch would be dumb when it was being oh built, God, and like they're comparing it. this idea to the Gateway Arch. Like you can't you know build it unless you dream it. And like if you this build will it, be the a national park for the nation. And I'm like, first of all, there are already plenty of national parks that have bison in their natural <laughs> habitat. What are you talking about? Bison have always naturally. Wanted to live on a bridge above the river. Like that I have yeah. that is that has been a life goal of bison for as long as bison have been roaming. They just wanna they just want to be caged into a bridge. Now I'm all above for I, I, the Missouri, I'm Mississippi, all, dang Mississippi it. Mississippi River. <laughs> I'm ready to go to Missouri, can you tell? I am all for a a natural habitat for bison somewhere. It, it, but it needs to be but acres. A, and a bridge? You want them to live uh, on a bridge? It's so... Why? You better believe Why? this will and be you, the, the community the, meeting I, I am at. What I love, too, is like, do you really think that people... So they've got all these like walkways, these like elevated walkways <laughs> where you look down on the bison <laughs> on this model. And I'm like, you really think people are going to walk across this bridge to look at bison? I can't. I can't with it. Like, we can come up with... <sighs> See, Jason, this is just people trying to get that capital N, capital P... Because they listen to you, and now they're like, "Well, if we just we put some bison on a bridge and call it a national park, Jason says people are going to come visit." No, there are, there are national okay. parks that can happen in Illinois. Let's Cahokia Mounds. Let's make that a national but that's park. That's an. It's isn't in that Illinois. A, oh, oh yeah. Sorry, you're, I was thinking, thinking effigy. effigy Mounds, yeah, yeah, which yeah, is already yeah. a national park. It's not a national park. It's a national. Monument. I yeah. mean, well, yeah, it's a lower end. No, lower. I'm sorry. Yes, it is part of the National Park Service. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's that's Buffalo Bridge, Bison Bridge. It's, it's, it's the, ridiculous. It's one of the more ridiculous National Park ideas I've ever it's heard of. It's pretty. So. It's pretty silly. Yes, it's awful. What is in your fresh tank this week? Uh, so my fresh tank is a book recommendation for uh, people of all ages, uh, but this is uh, a YA book series that are boys, Ethan and Henry, Ethan is 13, Henry is 10, they have devoured these books. It's called uh, Keeper of the Lost Cities. It's by Shannon Messenger. It's been out for a while. This is not a new book. There's nine of them total. Actually, there's 10 because one is like eight and a half is the title of it. The kids have done these through Audible. They are only available on Audible as audiobooks. Uh, You can get the books through the library or at a bookstore. Ethan told me that these are the best books he has ever read. And these, this is coming from a kid that, and Henry is falling in line with that. I think this is coming from a kid that was like wings of fire was like, I mean, that was huge and still is huge, but that was huge. Mm -hmm. And so I have heard from a few other families because I had shared there's actually, there's recipes 
in these in one of the books because they some of the long running themes of food certain food things they made recipes for which we we did one of the recipes I've never made anything so sweet for my children in their whole lives. I was like, I cannot believe I'm going to let them eat this. It was like chocolate chips and butterscotch and marshmallows and sweetened condensed milk. <laughs> Even like, I was like, oh, it I was, took a couple of bites and I'm like, oh. It was intense. But they had a blast making it and it's a it's a big recipe in the books. This is just a I haven't listened to it, but I know a lot of other families that have listened to it together on car rides. But if you are wanting to get your kid involved in something that they could really deep dive into, and these the audiobooks are hours. I mean, I think there's some of these books, if I remember right, Ethan telling me one book had like 90 chapters. I mean, these are epic. And our kids are walking around all day long. When people think our kids are like, have headphones on, and they're like, why do these kids have headphones on all day long? It is because... They are listening to this audiobook all day long. And then they are going back. Ethan is going back and starting over again. Like, so a great recommendation if you are looking for a last minute gift for a young person in your life, uh, consider an Audible subscription and load it up with some of these books for them. I think that they will really enjoy it. All right, that's it for this week's episode of the RV Miles Podcast. That's it for the RV Miles in 2023. We will not be back until 2024 because we are hopping in Tessie and we are making our way to Kansas City. So we want to wish all of you a very happy holiday season as it continues to roll on. And of course, a very, very happy new year. We hope that 2024 for all of us starts to see some of our goals or ideas that we have for ourselves. We're going to be talking about our goals for 2024 over on Detour, which is the podcast after the podcast. You can learn more about that at rvmiles.com slash mile markers. But until next year, we hope that you continue to stay safe, stay healthy, and keep logging those RV miles. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.